Mamoru Hosoda is a director that, up until around five years ago, I would have easily put down as one of my favourite creatives working in animation. After gaining prominence in the anime industry from spin-off films to franchises like Digimon and One Piece, Hosoda quickly established himself as one of the best filmmakers for family-oriented feature-length anime with modern classics like The Girl Who Left Through Time, Summer Wars, and one of my personal favourite films of all time, Wolf Children. By the time he reached Boy and the Beast, however, his partnership with scriptwriter Satoko Okudera came to an end, and with it, in my humble opinion, the high standards of his work. Don't get me wrong, The Boy and the Beast is a good movie, but it isn't great. Then his 2018 film Mirai of the Future I outright thought was terrible, although I do seem to be in the minority on this point, and I haven't seen it since it first came out in the cinema. Regardless, I was nervously excited to see Bell and find out whether it would be the easily enjoyable and endlessly rewatchable Shinkai film from the late 2000s, or the underwhelming and poorly paced movies of recent years. It was both. Bell is a film where I left the theatre and confidently told my girlfriend that I would give it a 6 out of 10. She agreed. I then elaborated and said that not once was the film as mediocre as a 6 out of 10, but the score instead came as a result of the film constantly flip-flopping between a 10 out of 10 and a 1 out of 10 quality for the entire 2 hour runtime. She agreed. Bell has some of the best humour in any of Shinkai's films, yet these scenes were few and far between. It has some of Shinkai's most enjoyable character interactions in the supporting cast, but the main characters were consistently bland by comparison. The film is a genuinely creative and original retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story, which is an aspect of the narrative that I ultimately felt limited what the film could do, instead of enhance the potential themes that this retelling allows. The biggest problem with Bell is ultimately a poorly paced script. While the ideas that Shinkai had for the film were all great in their own right, very rarely did they mesh together particularly well, leading to too much time spent on a generic and formulaic narrative that we've already seen before, literally, and little to no time devoted to Shinkai's greatest strength as a director, the way he portrays character interactions. That isn't to say that his directing was poor at all, Aside from how beautiful the film is with a perfect fusion of 2D and 3D art styles, each scene from the mundane, inconsistent script was adapted to screen flawlessly. This film is a clear example of how a great director can elevate a mediocre script, even if that script was written by the director. Also the ending, which I'm going to try not to spoil, but if you do plan on watching the film, I still recommend that you skip this part of the video. What was the deal with the whole conclusion to the mystery about the beast? Like, we found out who the beast was and we had this big emotional moment, but how was his very grim and genuinely traumatizing problem actually solved? He's still in the same situation as before, but now he's cool with it because of a hug. The whole reveal kind of falls back into what I was saying about good ideas executed poorly in the script. This reveal was good, but as my girlfriend pointed out, surely it would have made more sense for the Beast to have been the dad, who used the Beast as a method of dealing with grief and recontextualizing the message of Beauty and the Beast to involve family love instead of a romantic attraction. Wait, I just ruined the ending for anybody who ignored that war- There are still plenty of great things about Belle that I feel like I can't not bring up. Like how it has one of the best portrayals of online culture to come from anime. While the actual visuals used to portray this culture are clearly just a slightly updated repurposing of his portrayal of Oz in Summer Wars, that by no means makes it a worse film. While it does have the unfortunate side effect of forcing anybody remotely familiar with Shinkai's earlier filmography to draw even more comparisons to his better films, the art style used for Oz was great, and seeing it brought back in Bell was a treat for the eyes that you really should see on the big screen if given the chance. As a whole, if you want to watch a modern, animated musical adaptation of Beauty and the Beast, then watch Beauty and the Beast. the part of any crowd, cause her head's upon some cloud. No denying she's a funny girl that's there.